Hey, what's up? It's your girl Sakara Lachey, and with me, I have the beautiful fashion icon, Pilar Scratch. Thank you. That was so sweet. <laughs> Thank you for being here. You're welcome. So, everything changed for you at the age of 19 when you had your amazing son, River Mason. Tell me, what were some of your dreams and ambitions when you first had your son? When I first had my son, I wanted to be a fashion designer. I actually had my first line, Scratch. Um, and I make everything from scratch. My first showcase was at the Coffee Cave in Newark, New Jersey. Um, and I made it from curtains, bed sheets, and I found I was pregnant. And so, you know, I did, I want to call it, I did the Degrassi slide down the wall, you know how, like, they're really emotional. I did that, and I was, like, in the bathroom at the Coffee Cave. So I was like, what am I going to do in my life? I was still in school, and I was in school for education. But it was like every direction God was turning me back to fashion, you know? Like, you can't be someone's teacher. You don't have patience, you know? So, like, um, yeah, that was my dream was to be a fashion designer. But I was kind of steered off path, you know? And, you know, going to school, what I thought would be a sense of stability, it really isn't. So it, I look at it as a death. But, yeah, so I was, you know, everything happens for a reason. And, yeah, that was probably my dream to be a fashion designer. But then I got to time consumed with it and so started wardrobe consultation. And you know, that's pretty cool that you mentioned being a designer because a lot of people know you as a wardrobe stylist. Yeah. So throughout my research, I found that you did a few fashion shows. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what was it like when you first did your runway show and you actually had a chance to see your designs? That was really, oh, that was, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but when I think about those fashion shows, I, I showcase that like, um, a lot of the rooftops of New York, Empire Hotel, uh, with Eric Vega and Herbert Fox, and they're like the big, you know, rooftop people, fashion show people, whatever. Um, that is when I wore too much bronzer. I don't know if you saw <laughs> those pictures, but I was orange, and those ones started laughing. But just to see my designs come to life on like yeah. models, some of those girls I'm still really cool with today. We follow each other on social media. They're really sweet girls. Um, it was really amazing. And then I'm like, you know, I have a, I like putting clothes together on people more than like, I like design. I like to see people look good, mm -hmm. you know? So that's what, you know, just to see that liveliness. And I was really bashful at the end mm -hmm. originally, you know, when the designer was coming out, I was always like, but yeah, that, that was an amazing film. It was, it was really amazing. And I'm so glad you said that because I noticed that when I watched like on YouTube, I was like, oh my god, I didn't even notice her. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was really quick. I was really quick. I would be like this, like a little mouse, like, oh my god, oh my god, what are all these cameras now? I'm gonna red carpet, like, mm, serve it, you right? Know, but Pause. yeah, yep, right over here, right here. No, redo that, you know, now. But then I would just be like, I'm like. Really? I don't know what the hell I was and I love how you said that you were out there making people look good and mm -hmm. seriously you were. I was watching mm -hmm. it and I was like, wow, this is amazing. Thank You're you. welcome. So you. let them know who are some of your clients now and some of the people you work with in the past. Um, I could just shout out who I work with, Fashion God. Uh, Music Soul Child Chow has been featured. I've dressed him, I'm Jones, we've had Dr. Tavis in here. It was it's been a lot of people, uh DJ enough from Hot 97, my aunt Radega. Deja vu, WBLS. <laughs> but I've just a lot of like uh, celebrities in Manhattan. I've done product placement with a lot of people. Um, Amina Butterfly. Oh my God, Dylan Dilly, Lo Kaja. Um, yeah, I've dressed so many people throughout the years. It's been amazing, but it's been a long, it's been a long, long road. And I'm gonna say I've grown a lot. I mean, your clientele is amazing. Thank you. Seriously, you're welcome. So everybody knows the success from challenges. What would you say was your biggest challenge thus far within the fashion industry? Within the fashion, just being respected. Um, there's been so many people that uh, fashion is really hard. It's not like journalism where you just grab the next celebrity. You don't want you have to have relationships with people to respect you. Just in New York, there's so many people that you know go to Parsons or. FIT and they think they're designers and people look at you and they're just like yo we can intern with you. you know I when I started out I interned with Patricia Bill. now we have a great relationship because I've made a name for myself you know um, it's it's just really hard to be respected in this industry like we were saying off the camera I never told people my age because once they see it you, you're younger they don't respect that um, but, you know, I'm 24, I could say it now, <laughs> but at the time being 19, people would think like, oh, you're just an intern, I'm not going to pay you, you know, 
compensation do you have credentials sweetie like I, I told that before so I'm just speaking from my experience it's hard to be respected and once you get that respect once like Patricia Field the Ty Hunters of the world the Philip Blotches of the world put that stamp on you and say she's up next you you're up next trust me and well, shout out to you guys I love you guys <laughs> so of course your challenges you know it, it got a little crazy at one point so tell me what was the moment when you knew that you made it I don't feel, I don't have to, I've never had that moment, like I don't feel like I've made it. I don't feel, because I'm always like, what's next? What am I doing next? Like, and I'm, I'm, I'm like a coffee person, I'm a, a coffee representation. <laughs> like, I'm always like, what's next? I, I don't want to say I've never had that moment. I, sometimes I'm just like, I'm just a regular girl from North New Jersey, walking on the street. But I did have one tiny moment when it was just like, this is surreal. I want to say surreal moment. Um, Brianna's unapologetic listening party. We were in line. And the publicist would even say, you are Pilar Scratch, correct? And I'm like, oh God, it's about to be some damn drama. And she's like, she's like, yeah, she's like, you're VIP, honey. You go up this way. Security, and they call security, and they were like, move out the way, Pilar, coming through. And it was like people behind us screaming. And it was me and my twin sister, Madison J, my publicist, Equico, and another old friend. Um, and that was just like, and it escorted us to VIP, and like Tyson Beckford is there. Um, it was just like, who am I? And it was like an outer body experience. Rihanna walks through and I'm like, that's Rihanna, you know? So it was just like, it was an outer body experience. I was, that was really like, what? Oh my God, I'm scared of me a little bit. Like, do I want my own autograph? Like, who am I? <laughs> you know, that was, that was an amazing night for me. That was the moment where I felt like I was in, it was only a year into wardrobe that happened for me. So it was like, I feel like I'm on the right path. You know, even in college, doing education was a struggle. Doing this was so much easier, you know, and when you're on your path and you're on your purpose, everything, it just goes so smoothly. And that's how you know you're on the right path. And I was like, this is what I'm meant to do. And so that, that night was amazing. We, it, <laughs> That night was really amazing. And like Tyson back from my twin sister still really good friends with him. We made a lot of, um, Jennifer Williams was there and I was telling you her ex-husband, um, Eric, hi, forgot about <laughs> But yeah, so, um, she was there, uh, Olivia. It was a lot. It was an amazing night, and that was like a little night to remember. Big lights. And that's funny, too, because you made it so far. I mean, that was incredible. Thank you. But you did mention coming from Newark. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what was it like growing up in Newark? Not easy. It's Newark. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's like, I think it's like, isn't it like the worst city in Jersey, second to Camden or something like that? I think so. <laughs> oh, it was horrible. Like, we, you know, we weren't supposed to make it. You know, we weren't supposed to be successful. My twin sister and I. Um, we were supposed to be statistics. I, I don't really know a lot of people coming out of Newark that are doing anything with their lives. Um, I've had a lot of friends. They're dead. You know, I, it, it, it's hard. It's hard, you know. Um, but I would like to say now, looking back at it, everything happens for a reason. Even the struggle I went through as a child, like, it made me stronger. Um, I've had some friends that are just spoiled and they don't know how to balance a checkbook or they don't know how to pay rent one time They don't you know, and I've learned all that through my struggles. So I'm happy for it It, it made it made me who I am and I'm proud of the woman I am, you know, so um, Being 24 I have a really great career That doesn't happen and I feel like all of my trials and tribulations led me there um, Yeah, Newark isn't an easy place. We stay in fights Girls just didn't like us for no reason. There's one time I was in the bathroom, a girl just punched me in the face. What? Yeah, my sister beat her up. Ha. But <laughs> it was, you know, like it. It was difficult, you know. But we um, went to Hillside High, go comments, and that really, you know, it, it changed us. I'm gonna say that saved us. We had like really great teachers there, and um, we didn't even have a district. But we walked every day to school, high school, hungry. Like starving just to get to school just because we, we wanted it and that's kind of why you have to be in the industry you gotta want it you gotta be hungry for it so knowing that that little hunger for it i think that's why we're in the entertainment we said that early i figured it out you helped me today you helped me so that hunger that drive that we had to get to school is kind of the same drive we gotta have in the entertainment industry but yeah it's really complex um I'm, I'm grateful though i, I really am um just because my aunt's like brought together and things that she handed and she was off on tours she didn't know she had two nieces that wanted to be 
in the entertainment industry. And it's in when she saw that you're serious about this, I'm gonna help you then. Only when you have a name for yourself, because you're not gonna live off my commissions. Nothing in this world is handed to you. And when things are handed to you, they're not for you. You know, you have to work hard. Anything worth having is working hard for. So, yeah, the trials and tribulations, they make you who you are. And they give you those breaks to build your foundation. Right, and I feel like that was beautifully said. Thank and you. You're welcome. <laughs> and you've been on TV, you've been on television sets, cameos here and there. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what was it like the first time you saw yourself on the screen? I was just like, who is she? And I was like, she's orange. <laughs> you know, I get that from my little brother when he saw me in Flesh and Jersey Licious. And he was like... I'm gonna say Polar, but he said my real name. And he's like, Why are you orange? You're a Oompa Loompa. I was so <laughs> And I was like, You know what? On oh, Jersey Glitches, we're all orange. Like, so, <laughs> it, yeah, it was horrible. I was like, I'm never gonna wear that bronzer again. And I did some like, makeup tutorials. And <laughs> it was horrible. But um, yeah, it was a good experience. That is just like, Wow. Like, I'm on television right now, you know? And I'm really, I'm, I'm right there. You know, that's really, it's weird. Weird. Weird for And you were, did a little cameo. When you see yourself, you're going to have that same experience. You're like, whoa, <laughs> I'm going to screenshot this and put this on Instagram right now. Yeah. It's a really, it's a really like, wow, that's me. Hmm. Okay, go good you. Go you. I'm going to hit you up too. Okay. When that happens, I'm going to be like, screenshot it, send it to me. I'm like, yeah, let's get it. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you how was the experience. Oh, like, yeah, yeah you're like, whoa. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you're going to be taken back for a minute. Yeah. Oh man. And then you have this really good thing about your name, Pillar mm -hmm. Scratch. Can you mm -hmm. tell everyone why Scratch came into play? I made all of my clothes from Scratch. I, I used to get in so much trouble because we lived with our grandmother in Florida, in Seaburn, Florida. And I used to get in so much trouble. She was a seamstress. She had a social she taught Max and I had a And so, if I didn't like, I'm like, I didn't like my outfit today. I took the curtains down. I started making my shirt. Yep, I got tore up. I got tore up. Yep, I got in so much trouble. She's like, why are you doing this little girl? We put on fabric stuff. I'm like, grandma, you gotta relax. <laughs> and she was like, what? Who are you talking yeah. to? And I was, I was young. I was like eight. And so, but I always took bed sheets, curtains, anything, and I would just make clothes. Like, I would just make clothes for them because I was a weird kid. You know, people. I used to draw this like character Miss Funky, different outfits in eighth grade. Oh, wow. And she would have, she would just be so fabulous. And, you know, that's who I wanted to be. I just wanted to be fabulous and have so much. Yeah, if you go to my house now, it's ridiculous. The shoes wall. Oh, I'm sorry, off topic, but yeah. But um, that's where Scratch came from. I'm going to make everything from Scratch. That's great. No, tell us a bunch of classic. I mean, you know, all these people out there trying to get to your level, at least they'll know that they can get there. You get so much free stuff. My I, my twin sister, Madison, shout out to you, annoying little girl. She comes and she'll just take them. Like, you haven't worn these yet. I need, I have an event to go to. And she just, yeah, if you guys look up Madison, you see Madison. And so she'll take, like, I'm like, all right, she's like, all right, so get this in this size because I want that too. Cause you don't like it, so just like designers will send me stuff. She'll just be like, "You don't like that." What? Yes, I do. You know, but it, it, that's like a perk to it. You get so many free clothes. I don't really have to go shopping. You know, even for my son. My son is. Ugh, I have to like. I, I still have his like clothes from. It's a lot. It's too much clothes. Too much clothes. Too much shoes. And you know how you can say a woman never has to. I have too much. Wow. I have too much. And you're so young and you already have so much. It's, it's bad. I need just a whole room for a closet. Like, my mom, she was in my house today and she found like her dolphin stuff and it was like in the back of my closet. She's like, I haven't seen this in two years. I'm like, calm down. You left it here. I told you not to. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a lot. And you know, your, your actual fashion god magazine, it's mm -hmm. not just a magazine. You use it to give back to other yeah. people, up and coming artists. Can you tell the people out there exactly how you give back to others? Fashion guys, the idea came from, you know, I was an emerging uh, aspiring designer at one point. And no one wants to give other people that opportunity to, you know, get that big start. So I wanted to come up with a platform just to, like, help people. And I'm like, I have all of these celebrity friends and contacts. They're going to do the photo shoot. That's not even a problem. I'm like, how can I help others? You know, and so many people hit me up like, I want to work with you. I want to work with you. I want to work with you. And I will feel bad if I ignore the email or, you know, people are like, I want to intern with you. And I'm like, I can't take you with me to California. Like, I'm not paying for your plane ticket. So how can I help here in, you know, the tri-state area? 
So Fashion Guide, what I did was, um, you know, I create the platform to where upcoming hairstylist designers, um, makeup artists, um, and the hairstylists and makeup artists kind of stuck with me, Happy Cosmetics and um, Shantice Michelle, because uh, they're amazing and I love them so much. I love my sisters. But, um, and even bloggers, um, I'll have a mainstream website come in and I'll have a, a person with a blog spot or a WordPress that when it, you want to interview Music Soul Child, yeah, okay, come on. And it will just, I'll post something on Instagram and all 31,000 followers I have will just go crazy on posts. Like, oh, she needs to come, she needs to come, she needs to come. And I'll like, email me, guys, email me, email me, I'll give you the confirmation, come. You'll interview the celebrity or you'll do makeup or be a designer. You know, and that's how I want to give back. Everyone needs that big start. And, you know, just to be like, Polar help me. If, you know, because no one helped me. And you know, people need that. People really, really need that. Definitely. Totally agree. And I think that's great that, you know, you're definitely giving back to the people out there, which we need more of. Yeah, we do. And guys, we need to help. For real. <laughs> And, you know, you're all about fashion, so what are some of your favorite fashion trends of 2015? I didn't have any. Really? I hated it. Um, you, yeah, um, I can't really say one celebrity did it, you know, and I was so upset. What was, I, you know, I'm a classic girl, and I'll give you my favorite of all time, so I'm not like, just like, you know. I love pointy toe shoes. They're so classic for any season. I have like a white pair on right now. They're they're amazing. They like even if you want to wear jeans, like my aunt, she wears snake skin. This was last night, you know, you want to wear jeans, they're casual, you could dress them up, dress them down. And I, I think those are perfect. Um blazers. Blazers are good. I, you know, I throw blazers on with practically, especially in autumn. Look, look, yeah, it's a blazer. I look, love blazers. They even if you don't want to wear a coat, just throw on a blazer. You know, yeah. and you're gonna be fine. Blazers are good, and I like little chic half blazers like this one. Yeah, They're like super cute. cute. Yeah, I like to like yeah. pair like vintage with like something that's like really simple, and, like chic, and get a little twist with my really funky hair. Um, but I like that. Like this, I think I thrifted this. I thrifted this dress and I found it and I'm just like, my mom's just like, it's so jam Brady. I'm like, mind your business. <laughs> but it's it has like different patterns. It's like, yeah. I like to pick up pieces that no one likes, you know? Like I will never be at an event if someone has on my outfit because I know for a fact, like I'm gonna you know, twist and turn and thrift or put it with a blazer. This was sent to me and this was thrifted. So, you know, I like to like, you know, Tour with thrifty stuff. I, I like doing that a lot. You know, it's not it's not about what you wear, it's how you wear it and the, you know the fashion you have with that. That's what I do. Exactly. Like honestly when I saw it saw that I was like, wow, I've never seen that before. Like, you but I'm, you're welcome. And it's so funny, like I already know when I'm around people who do fashion, I know no one else has it, so I'm like you sort of now. <laughs> so you've accomplished so much already. But what are some of your future goals? Your future goals? Well, my sister and I plan to have a reality show next fall. Um, that should be cool, I guess. Um, that I'm writing a book. It should be published by next year as well. Um, and just like, you know, to, I don't know, keep inspiring, to help people give back as much as I can, um, talk to as much people I can, just try to help. Even if it's a conversation, you don't know what can change someone's life. So that's what I do when I'm just helping people, inspiring them like that. And just you know, try to get some fashion trends for next year, right? Yeah, that I like. Yeah, this year was who was your favorite? Um, honestly, I'm not that mm -hmm. that much into fashion where I could pick a person. Mm -hmm. But personally, I do like the blazers and I like boots. Like I'm very big on mm. boots. So this season is like Autumn. my season. Yeah. yeah. So the short boots with the little hill at the bottom. Yep. That's all me. I love it. I love it. Yeah. 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 You don't have a favorite celebrity because they suck this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really don't. Like it. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Even Kylie, her little Yeezy hat mm -hmm. ripped up. Uh, That's cute. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. I feel like she ran 2015. Yeah. <laughs> Out of all her sisters, like, all about Kylie this year. No, but I, see, I have my little thing with the Jenner girls because mm -hmm. they're ungrateful. Mm -hmm. They need to pay homage to Kim because without Kim, we wouldn't care about them. I'm sorry. 
So real. So real. You just got If Kim disappeared tomorrow, if Kim would have never married Kanye, none of them would have been relevant. Let's start with that. So Kim always pay homage, girls. Learn from your big sister. You know? There That's you just go. how I feel about them. And you have the you have the pillar of truth right there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so hopefully next year we will have some things from mm -hmm. like, oh, that fashion is great. And you know what, you're right. I feel like last year things stood out a lot more. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, you know what? B, B, Beyonce kind of looked cute this year. Mm -hmm. She went for a different look, I want to say. she. There were some moments where I thought Beyonce was like, I'm like, yes, okay. And Ty really transformed her this year because the whole, I forgot about the video of her, Nicki Minaj did. I loved it. It was really different for her you know i like that um but kim kim just i'm not gonna put kim in that because kim's pregnant right so sure. kim you're not in this because she was killing it before she was pregnant but now she doesn't want to get ridiculed so if she's dressing a certain way i get it so yeah i get it and um you did mention briefly about the reality show can you tell us a little bit of what you guys would be doing um, or just not yet. life okay. it's just following us around you guys can see when I say Madison's annoying, how she's annoying. Um, my son River, he models, so him, my aunt, Rod Digger, she'll be part of it as well. So it's just about, you know, a dynamic, powerful family. A real life empire, I want to say, but not as, mm, as empire. So <laughs> yeah, just, um, just giving you the ins and outs of different fields of the entertainment industry and how they coincide with one another. Um, it should be interesting that producers think so. So, okay, we'll see. <laughs> so, speaking of River Mason, your son. Hi, Ruby. He's actually an entrepreneur already, yeah. and he's so young, four years old, he's <laughs> killing it already. <laughs> so, he has his own partnership with you on Erobi Eyewear. Mm -hmm. So, what made you guys go into eyewear? Because River and I love sheep. I know that's like so cliche, but it's a stem off of his last name and the half of Pilar, P-I. So I came up, his last name was Roman Sally, he's Nigerian. So I took the e -row and then the P from Pilar, e -row -p. So and then I'm just like, I can see someone like, oh, I got on those e <laughs> It was a completely like weird marketing strategy, like when I was on a train. So um, yeah, that's how it came about. And um, we just ran with it. Um, we had our first collection and it sold out, it did pretty well. And we're gonna release one like every fall. Um, it kind of like fell to the backside because River was in the hospital for a while. Um, he had Gillian Barre syndrome, he couldn't walk yet, meningitis in his brain. So we kind of fell back at the beginning of the year towards it. Um, but we are planning to launch it for the winter. Again, we've had some designs and they custom made in the UK. So um, we put in our little shipment with them and they should be here for the winter. So we are excited. River doesn't know what's going on though. <laughs> He's just like, he has his own like bank account. And when he wants something, I don't pay for it. I'll be like, you know, River, he knows how to budget at four. He'll be like, Mommy, but if I get this toy, I'm only going to have $10 left for the week. So I don't want to get this toy it's too much. Like, you know, so Level. you teach him. You got to teach him early. Because let's say God forbid something happened to me or his dad, what he has to learn, even at four, to stand on his own and be independent, you know. So, yep, that's what I do with my baby. <laughs> but he doesn't know. He doesn't even understand what's going on. He just really wants to be a regular little kid, play at the park, eat milk and cookies and candy all day. Right. The regular childhood life. Yeah, that's what he wants. And then people stop him, they're like, Mommy, is that your friend? I'm like, River, they just know you. How do they know me? Like, Aww. and then he doesn't understand. I'm like, River, remember you did Curly Kids Hair Care? It was on the sticker at Walmart. It's on the bottom. So they saw your face. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, he just gets so confused. So, maybe one day he'll understand. Aww. So, uh, who was your favorite designer coming up? Did you have that? Didn't. Um, I'm gonna please the fifth and probably say Patricia. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Patricia, hey, Pat. Patricia Phil. You know what? She's so eccentric, and you know, even having the opportunity to intern with her. And then I worked with. Originally, I met her on the set of Americana. Um, I was on set for that. And they asked me to sit in the audience. <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. It never aired. It was supposed to be on ABC, but Ashley Green was pretty honest. Um, so I met Patricia Phil there, and you know, me and this guy, I don't even know where he's at now. She kept calling him Sergeant Pepper because he wore a hat, and like it was just amazing just working with her. So I'm just gonna say her just because she's an amazing, amazing person. So, what was it like for your first red carpet event? 
that's huge who was my first red oh my god i don't even remember i could just probably say i was nervous and i made a crazy face because i remember i would after after like a few events i would just be i would be in my bathroom mirror and i would have to practice posing so i probably made a crazy face i was orange more than likely <laughs> and probably had to like practice posing but just being around like you know, celebrities getting used to it—it's—it's um, really—it's—it's it's a crazy feeling. I can't really put. I'm, I'm like acclimated to it now. So like when I see someone, it doesn't go so cool. I'm like, hey, I sit there and have like a cocktail or something. But um, it's a good feeling. It's a—it's. I probably I was probably nervous. You know, I used to be really scared of celebrities. Like I used to be like. Then like they'll look at me like, uh, you're here for a reason. Snap, you better snap out of it. So I'm like, you're right, you are. So yeah, it's probably, I'm probably awkward. Yeah. In orange. <laughs> um, so you know, my site is definitely about dreams and ambition. We were speaking earlier about this. So if you could just give the listeners out there a little bit about dreams and ambition, some of the things that you were told when you were trying to come up, and you know, things you deal with now, and how you overcome it. Um, growing up, whew, I just got, uh, I really, I didn't really have, like, a traditional life, you know, say I don't want to play anybody on blast, but, um, having, you know, good grandparents, you know, like, really helped me, um, but they passed away when I was really young, so I was, like, eight, um, then we came back up to Jersey, it wasn't easy, um, but then I got pregnant with River at 19, and, Hmm. His dad, you know, he wasn't ready to be a dad at the time, and we were young. He was my first everything, first love, first person, you know, lost my virginity to, everything, and he decided he wasn't ready to be a dad, so he left me, and I was like on my own. I was 19 years old. Um, I was told to get realistic dreams by someone I looked up to. Um, I lived in a shelter for about three, four months after that. Um, I got my own apartment, and from then I just, you know, I focused, I put a vision board on my wall, and I said, three years, and I told you earlier, one of my goals was to meet Ty Hunter, yep, one of my goals on my vision board, and I kept saying every day, I'm going to meet Ty Hunter, and in my head, we were best friends, don't think I'm weird, but I would envision us walking down New York having Starbucks, and like, I was like, that is my best friend in my head, and I will say that every day, I started interning for Patricia Field. You know, River's dad did come around eventually. Um, and now he's, he's an amazing dad, and they're both annoying together equally. <laughs> they gang up on mommy all the time, but you know, we were young. So everyone isn't perfect, but everyone does make mistakes, and you know, it, it molded me to who I am today. So I'm, you know, if it could be different, I would have wanted it to, but I'm thankful it happened so I can learn how to, you know, stand on my own. Um, but he's a good dad now. And so just, you know, Long story short, me and Ty are really good friends now. He was on my vision board. Um, and you have to just speak things into existence. You have to believe in your purpose. You have those people. If you're not losing friends, you're not making moves. That's me and Maddie's quote. And you will see friends start dropping off like flies. And it's because they don't see your purpose because theirs isn't as big as yours. There's nowhere to reach but for the stars. You know, there's you you have to dream big or you're not dreaming. And people don't get that. People think these are just aspirational quotes and they are a livelihood. You have to you have to be Kanye about your dreams. If you're not Kanye about your dreams, then you might as well not dream. And like that's why Kanye made it to where he is today, because love yourself like Kanye loves Kanye, you know? <laughs> like you have to you have to be your biggest fan. You have even before you're famous, even before you're and even if you work a regular job, everybody wants to be well-known and respected for their craft and what they do. I don't care if you're a teacher. You want to be employee of the month. You, you want to be respected for what you do. So my theory is, like, everyone wants famous some certain type of way. You want to be acknowledged for your greatness. Be great. You have to dream without limitations. You have to, you know, you have to believe in yourself. Even when you're, There's going to be times where people will look at you like, what the hell is she doing she's wasting her time she's not making any money you have those friends like who do you think you are you'll get those friends that unfollow you on social media when you are doing well and what i say if you're not getting that you're not doing something right because once you're per once you find your purpose everyone's not going to be on that same frequency that you're on 
and that's how you know you're 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 on the right path is when those things start happening and yeah once it starts it's gonna feel overwhelming and you'll get those moments where you're really depressed and you're like you know am i doing what i'm supposed to do like just dream without you know ceilings reach for the stars